So it's great to see you, ladies and gentlemen, and I'm very happy that um, you're on board. So today is a very important day, and we are waiting for two things. Number one, we're waiting to see if we are going to have a new deputy president. The second thing that we are importantly expecting is to see whether the deputy president's side will contest in court the decision that was made by the Senate. And that is very interesting. And now it is rush against time for both sides. If you look at the president's side, you realize that the smoke is already out so vividly enough. For instance, right now, you know, we are talking about, of course, the professor himself, the default man. And I think politics is very interesting. All right. I am seeing Jalango saying that he has done everything else. And what he has never learned to finality is how politics is being played. So if you look at yesterday, there are two arguments about how everything was handled. Number one, the deputy president side, that is Rigadi Gashagwa side, tried to play a game to fix the Senate or to fix the impeachment process, which of course, right now we can't confirm with the utmost certainty that he is not sick. We now know that deputy president is sick. We can't refute the fact that he is sick. We know that he is sick. But in the political arena, there is an argument that this was a frame. This was a game that was being played. And this game met another more advanced game skill. And it is the skill that came from the senators. In fact, we were not expecting to hear that the senators will vote no to the postponement of the hearing date of and finalizing the businesses of the day or of the Senate. In fact, when the Speaker of the Senate took some time off, a breakout time, when he said five minutes, when he came back, you know, the kind of sequential flow of activities at the Senate, you would not be predicting that they were going to refute the plea to have the Deputy President be heard on Saturday. But at the very tail end, the very last second, you know, the, the nay naysayers had it, okay? It was unexpected. Nobody actually saw that. So after that, you talk of how things were flowing seamlessly. All the papers were already in place, efficiently running the processes. The speaker had notes already drafted clearly well that you will be trying to say, if he was not priorly planned for all that, there was no way we would be seeing such sequential, seamless flow of activities. So that is the reason why I'm saying that if they noted that the game, political game, which was being orchestrated by the deputy president's side, was to fix the Senate, then it means they had to play a higher game. And actually, I see that this game was played immediately. We had the lunch break in session and the gist of it or the critical part of it was played when the Senate Speaker took the breakout time. You say, remember he said it was to be five minutes, but I think it was roughly 15 minutes. So in 15 minutes, they organized a counter measure that really you will be trying to describe now as DP President side Waliji Kanganya. So the expectation was to fix the Senate, but in the counter measure or the counter move, which is the chess game, the president side really played it, this game so well. Now, if you look at the intention of the deputy president side, they were to fix the Senate such that, first of all, they buy time, and the buying of the time was being looked at based on what was supposed to be expected today. So if it was supposed to be postponed, then we talk of Saturday, today we might not see what was to happen, right? The National Assembly or the nominated deputy president was not to be discussed because we had not concluded the business of the Senate. So that is Saturday. In fact, if the request was to be granted as per what uh, the senior counsel Paul Mwite said or made a request on, then we were to go up to Tuesday. You see, buying time. So the strategy, if it was a game from the side, was to buy time first of all. This other thing, because they were looking at two areas, the other thing was to build a case. And the building of the case was if the Senate was to go contrary to their game, which of course they now have a kind of built up case. If they go to court, which we are expecting today, they are going to reason based on the fact that, you know, 
Article 145 was not honored. You know, deputy, deputy president was not given a fair hearing. And if you look at the learned friends and, and colleagues, <laughs> they call themselves, you know, their legal minds, they are saying that was very, very much vital. So whoever advised on this game, if it was a game from the DP side, their main focus was on Article 145, saying that this game is coinciding well with it. And buying time, if the Senate goes against it, they have a solid ground to even build up their strong basis in court. So th that was something which was very interesting to follow. And we are going to see how things will be, be developing thick and fast in the event they contest this in the corridors of justice. So if you are going to see their presentations in the courts, the arguments around this will form the basis of how the court will determine, all right, everything going forward. Very, very much interesting. So if you leave alone all of that, the other thing that I wanted us to do a recap on, when you look at the way they voted the issues, the grounds, okay, the 11 grounds, it was seeming that by the time they were crafting how to counter uh, this kind of move by the deputy president side, they decided that if we are supposed to vote the grounds to make us carry the day, then let us move with the grounds that are incontestable that cannot be contested in the courts, or if they are contested, they will have proper reasoning behind them. So if you look at the grounds that were rejected, there were grounds which the motion mover found it very difficult to prove. And if you look at the cross-examination of the witness or the evidence that was presented by the motion mover, there were grounds that Ongoya really deconstructed Mutuse on. And so the counter move by Ruto's side was to ensure that if you are to, to vote yes, let us vote yes on the grounds that are very, very weighty and critical. Even if you present them before the court, you can deduce proper reasoning and proper defense on them. Now, honorable senators, the result of the division indicate that the Senate has upheld the following impeachment grounds. One, gross violation of articles 10 to A, B and C, 274, 731A, and 2B, 751C, and 129.2 of the Constitution, and Article 147.1 as read together with Article 131.2C and D of the Constitution. 4. Gross violation, ground number 4. Gross violation of Article 161 of the Constitution on the institutional and decisional independence of judges. Ground number five, gross violation of articles 3.1 and 148.5a of the Constitution and the fidelity to the oath of office and allegiance. Ground number six, serious reason to believe that His Excellency the Deputy President has committed crimes under sections 13.1a and 62 of the National Cohesion and Integration Act. Ground number nine, gross misconduct that is incompatible with the high calling and dignified status of the office of the Deputy President and a member of the Cabinet and the National Security Council. His Excellency, the Deputy President, has publicly attacked and undermined work of the National Security Intelligence Service and its officers. Now, Honorable Senators, pursuant to Article 145.7, and 151b and 2 of the Constitution and standing order 78.8 of the Senate. The Senate has resolved to remove from office by impeachment His Excellency Rigathi Gashagwa AGH, the Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya. Accordingly, His, Ex His Excellency Rigathi Gashagwa AGH ceases to hold office. I thank you. So the, the grounds that can be presented before the court right now, they're very, very much vital. And so those grounds are key. Those grounds, the counter move, which the president side actually decided to take, was to give a upper hand in the event, the DP was to bring out an argument in court. So that is the frame of how things went yesterday. How do you think the National Assembly is going to tackle this? I think let's wait because just some few hours or so and then we see what is happening